<coughs> on infectious mononucleosis by Dr. Ignatius Cole. Let's begin. So about this presentation, we'll be talking about the etiology of infectious mononucleosis, the transmission, the pathology, the clinical features, the complications, investigations, and treatment. So what etiology? What are the causes of infectious mononucleosis? Infectious mononucleosis is caused by Epstein-Barr virus, which is a DNA virus of the herpes virus family. Epstein-Barr virus is also known as human herpes virus 4. This is the structure of Epstein-Barr virus. However, infectious mononucleosis-like diseases can be caused by other viruses too, uh, like herpes, human herpes virus 5 and 6, and other various multitudes of viruses. Transmission, the virus is usually shared in the oral secretions, that is saliva, and is transmitted by close contact, uh, which includes kissing and exchange of saliva. Uh, like when someone you share your food with someone, the virus may be transmitted. It is called kissing disease too. So the pathology, the virus replicates in the oral epithelial cells, then is pressed to the salivary gland. So at first it replicates in the oral epithelial cells, then it replicates in the uh, is pressed to the salivary gland. After the salivary gland, it travels in the beta lymphocytes in the blood and it travels to the lymphoreticular system including the lymph nodes, the various lymph nodes, the spleen and the liver. The CD8 lymphocytes are the killer lymphocytes proliferate to check the replication of virus in the beta lymphocytes and represent the atypical lymphocytes seen in the Epstein-Barr virus infection. So in Epstein-Barr virus infection we see atypical lymphocytes. These atypical lymphocytes are nothing but the CD8 lymphocytes or killer lymphocytes which have proliferate to check the replication of the Epstein-Barr virus. Like other herpes viruses, Epstein Bar virus establishes lifelong latent infection after the primary infection with frequent asymptomatic reactivation. So there is a lifelong latent infection by the virus after its primary infection. So these are the main symptoms of infectious mononucleosis like a fatigue, malaise, loss of appetite and headache, photophobia, there is inflammation of the tonsils leading to reddening, swelling and white patches, there is sore throat and reddening, there is cough, and there are systemic features like chills, fever, and body aches. The spleen is enlarged, there is splenomegaly, and there is abdominal pain, and there is nausea. This is the clinical features. The prodrome consists of malaise, fatigue, fever, headache, nausea, sore throat, abdominal pain, and myalgia. There is pharyngitis, there is pharyngeal inflammation with tonsillar exudates. We can see the tonsillar exudates here. And there will be also petechi at the junction of soft and hard palate. Uh, there is mild splenomegaly in 50% of the patients, and there is hepatomegaly in 10% of the patients. So there is also generalized lymphadenopathy. These lymph nodes, these all lymph nodes can be swollen or inflamed. So the maculopapular rashes is seen in 3 to 15 percent. This typical maculopapular rash of Infectious mononucleosis is seen in 3 to 15% of total, but is seen in 30% of those who have received ampicillin or amoxicillin. So, if there is a case example or a case where a patient with such rash and the similar symptoms have taken amoxicillin and ampicillin, and after the intake of this amoxicillin, the rashes appear, there is a case of infectious mononucleosis. So, the complications of Epstein Barr. Virus infection are numerous. The common ones are severe pharyngeal edema, which may lead to dysphagia, antibiotic induced rest. Uh, it says that in 80 to 90 percent of patients with ampicillin, the data is variable in different books. Hepatitis in 80 percent, prolonged post viral fatigue, or this is also called chronic or fatigue syndrome in 10 percent, jaundice in less than 10 percent. Other uncommon uh, complications are maybe neurological. Hematological, renal, or cardiac, under neurological, it can be cranial lobe palsies, polyneuritis, transverse myelitis, and meningoencephalitis. On the hemolytic, hematological, it can be hemolytic anemia and thrombocytopenia. On the renal, it can be abnormalities on urinalysis and interstitial nephritis. On the cardiac, it could be myocarditis, ECG abnormalities, and pericarditis. So, are the, are the continuing to other complications? Uh, there could be rare complications like rupture spleen, 
So uh, rupture splint is a very real complications of infectious mononucleosis, respiratory obstruction, agranulocytosis, and X-linked lymphoproliferative syndrome. And Epstein-Barr virus can also cause cause malignancies. Malignancies like nasopharyngeal carcinoma, Burkitt's lymphoma, Hodgkin's lymphoma, primary CNS lymphoma, and lymphoproliferative disease in immunocompromised. So the investigations are, in the blood picture, there is leukocytosis and absolute lymphocytosis. The platelet counts are mildly low. The hepatic transaminases are elevated in 50% of patients. So AST, ALT are elevated. This can cause jaundice. And the Paul Bunnell test or monospot test or the heterophile antibody test is positive. So we will detect heterophile antibodies. Antibodies which will react to other antigens, different antigens other than the Epstein-Barr virus one. So uh, if they can agglutinate sheep red blood cells. And if we check for sheep agglutination of sheep red blood cells, that test is called Paul Bunnell test. And if we test for agglutination of horse RBC, then that's called monospot test. And both of these may be positive. So other investigations include IgM antibodies against the viral capsid IgM VCA and, and antibodies to EVV early antigen and the initial absence of antibodies to EVV nuclear antigen. These all can be taken as the uh, investigations of infectious mononucleosis. So detection of antibodies to Epstein-Barr virus specific antigen by ELISA or immunofluorescence can be done. So if there, we check the IgM to viral capsid antigen, it indicates the recent infection. If we check the IgG to uh, VCA or we check this EVNA, anti-EVNA, then it will in indicate the past infection. So what are the treatment? So rest and symptomatic therapy are the mainstays of management and the participation in strenuous activities and contact sports should be prohibited in the first two to three weeks due to the risk of splenic rupture. So if people are involved in uh, contact sport and this risk is post, then there is a risk of splenic rupture. So that should be avoided for two to three weeks. So there should be rest for two to three weeks of illness. And treatment with prednisolone, one mg per kg per day for uh, pediatric dose or 30 mg per uh, day for five days is advised for complications like hemolytic anemia, airways obstruction, meningitis, thrombocytopenia with bleeding, and intranasal steroids may be used to relieve nasal obstruction caused by enlarged adenoids. Thank you and please subscribe for further videos. Comment on what sort of videos you want to see next. Thank you.